Are you trying to install Windows 11 on a machine that doesn't meet the minimum requirements, such as TPM 2.0 and Secure Boot? Perhaps you've heard of Rufus. Well, today I'll go over the basics of Rufus, how to install it, use it, and overcome those restrictions with Windows 11 so you can install it on nearly any machine. This will also cover the basics with Linux, installing Clonezilla for cloning hard drives, as well as Debian or any other flavor of Linux, or most any other OSs. So, stand by for the good stuff. Rufus lets you take an ISO, which is literally a copy of a DVD or CD, typically an operating system or OS, and once downloaded, you can put it onto the USB and create bootable media to install on different systems. For instance, you can go directly to the Microsoft website, download Windows 11 Pro, the ISO, and install it onto a USB using Rufus, and then install it in any machine that you want to have Windows 11. You can also use it with programs like Clover to where that you can boot an operating system off a PCI Express NVMe drive that you normally couldn't boot from a PCI Express NVMe drive. You can also use it with programs like Memtest86 so that you can test your system's memory in case you think that there's a problem with your RAM. One prerequisite is that your computer does need to be able to boot from a USB drive so it can't be too old. If you can't boot from a USB drive, you're kind of stuck. Now, here's probably the most useful part of Rufus that I use probably on a daily basis. I use it to completely bypass the secure boot and TPM 2.0 requirements on many computers to be able to install Windows 11, where you normally can't. Enough about random USB drives and secure boot and TPM. Now let's get to the nit and gritty of installing Rufus and actually using it. All right, the first thing that you want to do is open up your browser and type in download Windows 11 and download Windows 11 and you will want to click on the not the Windows installation assistant not the create Windows installation media but download Windows 11 disk image ISO those are the ISOs I was talking about just click on the Windows 11 multi edition click download then after that loads up you'll go to select language and you'll select English United States confirm and then once it pops up download Windows 11 English 64-bit download click on that and it'll begin downloading now that it's completed you want to download Rufus so go to Google and then just type in Rufus and it's the first thing that pops up Rufus create bootable USB drives the easy way click on that that is definitely Rufus. That is what it looks like. We'll get familiar with that in a moment. But scroll down and look for the latest version. Standard version for Windows X64. Right now it's version 4.5. Click on that and download it. And once it completes, click on it. And it will run. Rufus is very lightweight, so you can have it sitting anywhere and run it directly from where you have it stored. Now, the first thing that you're met with is the device. This is where you select the USB that you want to put your ISO onto. For Windows 11 or 10, you'll want to make sure that you have a USB with at least 8 gigabytes. For Linux distros, you can usually get away with 2 or 4 gigabyte USB drives, but using at least an 8 gigabyte, make sure that you have plenty of space. Rufus formats the USB for you, so you don't have to worry about pre-formatting the USB or anything. Right now the USB that I want to use is not showing up, so I'll go ahead and install it. And you can see that it immediately pops up. New volume G, 32 gigabytes. That's exactly it. So we'll select that one. Next is boot selection. This is where you select the type of media that you want to create, which is typically a bootable ISO. Once you select the media you want for the USB, all the options below it will become available and selectable. From here we want to click on select and select our Windows 11 ISO that we just downloaded and click open and then more things populate under image option just select standard Windows installation Windows to go is an option only for very early Windows 10's versions as well as Windows 8 and 7 where you could run the operating system directly off of the USB what they call a portable OS so 
Don't worry about that one and just select standard Windows installation. Next is the partition scheme and for the partition scheme your options are GPT and MBR. MBR stands for Master Boot Record and is used when making a bootable USB for a system with a legacy BIOS or pre-UEFI that uses a bootloader. This is for older motherboards which are usually about 12 plus years old. The other option is the one you'll most likely be using, GPT. GPT stands for GUID Partition Table and is the newer standard that stores the data on how all the partitions are organized on a drive and how to boot the OS. If you have a UEFI instead of an older classic BIOS, you'll want to select GPT. Next is Target System. Target System is where you select whether your system has a classic BIOS or a modern UEFI. This field will automatically change depending on the partition scheme that you select. If you select MBR instead of GPT, it'll change the BIOS to UEFI CSM, which means BIOS compatibility. Or if you select GPT, it'll automatically change to UEFI or non-CSM. If you're using a Linux ISO that has UEFI support, your only difference will be when the MBR is selected. Here I'll show you what happens when you select a Linux ISO. Things change a bit. If you're using a Linux ISO that has UEFI support, your only difference will be when MBR is selected. Your only target system option will be BIOS or UEFI. This means your drive can be booted on both legacy BIOS or non-pure UEFI systems as well as on pure UEFI systems. This is the most flexible one to use if you're not 100% sure which one to use. If you know for certain that you have a modern pure UEFI motherboard, just select GPT for the partition scheme and UEFI non-CSM for the target system. For now we'll go back to the Windows install. If for whatever reason you're running into issues with Rufus not seeing your USB drive, you can try this. Underneath Partition Scheme, you'll see a drop-down menu named Show Advanced Drive Properties. You click on that and you'll see an option List USB Hard Drives. This will somewhat force all of your drives and USB drives to show up, so if you're having issues not seeing it, that might make it pop up. For now, we'll deselect that and go back to where we were. Next is Volume Label. Volume label isn't too important and is just what Rufus will label the USB so you'll know what is actually on the USB when you select a boot from it while in the UEFI or in the BIOS. Now for the file system, if you're making a Windows 11 USB, the only option will be NTFS. If you're loading a Linux USB, you can select either FAT32, which will be the default, or NTFS. If you want the USB to boot on both BIOS and UEFI systems, FAT32 is generally more reliable. That and NTFS can potentially cause problems if Secure Boot is enabled on your UEFI. Again, you can't go wrong with FAT32 when installing Linux. Next is cluster size. For cluster size, just use the default. Rufus will automatically choose what the default cluster size is based on the size of the USB. Generally, a larger cluster size should make reading from a USB just a bit quicker but in practice, there's almost zero difference. So just leave it on default, and it's good the way it is. Next is advanced format options. You want to make sure that quick format is checked, as well as create extended label and icon files. You can just keep these as default, unless you want to perform a pre-scan of the USB for potential bad sectors or areas, where you can also select multiple passes if you want to do additional passes for it. After all that, you're finally ready to format the USB and push the ISO to it. Just click Start, and then an option box will pop up, and this is the awesome part for the Windows 11 installations. You can remove the requirement for needing 4 gigabytes or more of RAM, and the best part of all, being able to completely bypass the need for Secure Boot and TPM 2.0, which is one of the main restrictions that people are running into with installing Windows 11. The next is another good one, removing the requirement for a Microsoft Online account. No more need to manually open a command prompt during the install to bypass it. It just completely skips it automatically. And for the next, you can also select for it to create a local account from the get-go without having to do it during the setup process, as well as naming what you want the account. Yet another one that privacy-minded people will love is the ability to disable Microsoft's data collection. 
If you've installed Microsoft 10 or 11 before, you're probably used to seeing this screen. Yeah, you'll never even see it pop up and it'll automatically disable all of those settings for you. The last one is disabling BitLocker encryption. BitLocker encryption encrypts the data on your hard drives. While it can be a handy feature for laptops that might get lost or stolen, for desktops it's a little pointless in my opinion. That in BitLocker taxes your hard drive's performance by about 10% on average for file copies and some other actions. Considering you might lose your BitLocker encryption key, which is ridiculously long, when you might not even want BitLocker on, it's just a potential pain in the ass waiting to happen. Since Windows 10, Microsoft started enabling BitLocker by default without even telling anyone that it's enabled. Thanks to Rufus, this is no longer a problem. You then click OK, and Rufus will ask if you're 100% sure that you want to write to the USB drive you just selected. Just click OK again, and Rufus will begin writing to the USB. Just a little after the halfway point, Rufus will start writing the Windows customization options that you selected earlier. The whole writing process takes on average just about nine minutes. Once Rufus chimes, that means it's complete and you can close the window. That's it. You can now take your bootable USB, put it in any laptop, desktop, old computer, server, whatever, and boot Windows 11 without TPM 2.0 and without Secure Boot. And also have an admin account from the get-go, a local account when you install it, no tracking, lots of good things with it. So, and like I said, you can use this with uh, Clover to boot an old server, to boot from a PCI Express NVMe drive. You can also load Memtest 86 onto it for memory testing, install Linux with it, Debian, Red Hat, Caldera if you want to, Linux Mint, Arch Linux, on and on. Rufus is probably one of the, my most most used utilities out of all the stuff that I use. But anyway, hopefully you found the tutorial useful. If you did, give the video a like. If not, whatever. But if you have any questions or comments, just be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. And if it's a question, I'll try to get to it as soon as possible. But thank you for watching.